Hey everyone, this is your stimulus update for Friday, July 17th. The stimulus update is for those of you wondering about the first stimulus check, as well as those of you wondering about the second stimulus check. If this is your first time to my channel, my name is Justin. I do stimulus updates and give financial advice. If you haven't subscribed already, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified each and every time I upload a new video. And if you would, hit the like button so that YouTube will share this video with others. In this video, I'm gonna be going over the following questions regarding the second stimulus check. First off, will there be an income limit of $40,000 and who might be eligible for the second stimulus check? What are the chances that there will be a second stimulus check? When will we get the second stimulus check? And what are the differences between what the House and the Senate want that could delay getting the second stimulus check and, and the next stimulus package passed? I'm gonna discuss all of that about the second stimulus check a little later in the video, but first I wanna to talk to those of you that haven't received your first stimulus check yet. Many of you on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, and VA benefits still haven't received your first stimulus check. And there are many others that aren't on those government benefits as well that haven't received their first stimulus check either. So yesterday I shared a new IRS phone number. Well, it's not a new number, but a different IRS phone number other than the IRS stimulus hotline. And I actually received a comment from somebody that said that the new phone number that I gave out yesterday worked for them. It was Dwight Neff and he said, that 1040 number worked for me. So the number is 1-800-829-1040. Once again, 1-800-829-1040. And that number is just a general IRS hotline to ask questions about a tax return or general tax questions. But I've had people that have used it to ask about their stimulus check and they've had some success. When you first get a representative, you can't just say, hey, what's, what's up with my stimulus check? Where's my stimulus check? You need to ask to be transferred to individual accounts. So when you call, you're gonna get a rep hopefully soon and then you need to ask that rep, can you transfer me to individual accounts? Once you're transferred to individual accounts, then you can ask that representative about your stimulus check. So if you haven't received your first stimulus check, try this number 1-800-829-1040. Ask them to transfer you to individual accounts and then you may ask them about your stimulus check, find out where it is, find out if it was sent to another account that you don't recognize or sent to an old address or something else. But hopefully they can get you some answers about your first stimulus check. I know there are a bunch of you that are still waiting for that first stimulus check and it's been months and months. So hopefully this new number can help you out and that you can get some answers and finally get your check. So let's talk about this second stimulus check now. So what are the main differences that are holding up the House and the Senate on the second stimulus check. As many of you know, the second stimulus check isn't a done deal yet. It's just being proposed and being discussed. And at this point, Congress is on recess until next Monday, but they are still kind of discussing plans a little bit behind the scenes. But these are the key differences between the House and the Senate that could possibly delay the next stimulus package. So the first thing are unemployment benefits. The House of Representatives is talking about continuing the unemployment benefits that expire the end of July. Those unemployment benefits of $600 per week extra on top of whatever the state unemployment benefits are, are giving a lot of people that are on them more money than they were making while they were working. This is something that the Senate has said they want to fix. So the big sticking point is the House wants to continue these $600 per week unemployment benefits while the Senate wants to lower that to the maximum of 100% of their previous salary when they were working. It seems to me that we shouldn't be paying people to stop working and get paid more than they were when they were actually working their jobs. It does seem to make sense that the Senate may have a bit of a good argument here, but that's the main sticking point as far as unemployment benefits goes. My guess is they probably will get something that's closer to the 100% that the people on unemployment were making before they lost their jobs. That's probably what's gonna happen between that one. The next sticking point is the total amount of the stimulus package itself. The HEROES Act was passed back in May by the House, and that HEROES Act was around $3.4 trillion. I think sometimes we forget 
or we, we can't even fathom how much a trillion dollars is. And the, the HEROES Act was $3 trillion. The Senate wants a number closer to $1 trillion. Just to give you an idea of how much a trillion dollars is, look at the screen right now. That little stack of money at the top left is $10,000. Don't we all wish we just had that $10,000 in our hand right now? Next to the guy on the floor is $1 million. That little, that little small stack of money next to the guy is $1 million. Now it starts to get substantial. The pallet full of $100 bills is $100 million. That's one pallet. You know, it looks like a few feet high. The next one shows $1 billion. That's 10 pallets of $100 million. That's a huge amount of money, $1 billion. However, the last graphic on this page, $1 trillion is, is just an absurdly ridiculous amount of money. If you look at the tiny little corner and, and it zooms in, so it shows the size of the guy next to the pallets. If you had $1 trillion, you could give 1 million people each $1 million. That's how much money a trillion dollars is. I think sometimes we forget when they're throwing out these numbers, one trillion, two trillion, three trillion dollars. We forget how much money a trillion dollars is. So right now, the House and the Senate are about two trillion dollars apart. So keep in mind how huge that amount of money is by, by thinking of that graphic that I just showed. Two trillion dollars is how far apart they are. My guess is they're gonna come in somewhere in between that one and three trillion dollar mark. Somewhere around two trillion dollars will probably be about the final stimulus amount. So the last sticking point that's kind of holding things up is protections for businesses, hospitals, and schools. The Senate has said that this is something that they want for sure, and that's protection for businesses, hospitals, and schools so that they cannot be sued if somebody that attend or that goes to one of these establishments actually contracts the, the virus and tries to sue a school, a hospital, or a business. The Senate wants these protections in place so that we can start reopening as soon as it's safe to open again. And the House of Representatives hasn't really talked about anything like this in any of their stimulus packages. So this one's gonna be an interesting sticking point and I'm not sure what's gonna happen with this one. The Senate sh seems to think that this is an absolutely no negotiation, it's gonna be in there. So we'll see what the House does, but that's definitely one of the sticking points that could hold things up to get something passed for the next stimulus package. Okay, so the questions as far as who might be eligible for the second stimulus check. We've heard Mitch McConnell recently talk about possibly a lower income limit somewhere around $40,000. And that $40,000 comes from a report from the Federal Reserve and Federal Reserve Chair came out and said back in May, those that make $40,000 a year or less, 40% of them lost their job at the peak of the, of the shutdowns and the economic collapse. So that's why Mitch McConnell was saying that, you know, maybe we should lower that stimulus check amount, the, the total income limit down to that $40,000 or less to ensure that those that really need it are going to get it, and maybe those that don't need it as badly don't get a, another stimulus check. Bloomberg reported this week, a cap at that level is not seen as likely, said a person familiar with the talk. So Bloomberg is reporting that somebody within, you know, that, that knows about these negotiations, somebody is saying that that $40,000 limit is not going to happen. So I'm hopeful that that's the case and that the, the limit is a little bit higher because I think somebody making $50,000 per year or $60,000 per year, that's not a lot of money still, and they're, they're probably still going to need another stimulus check. So my guess is that income limit, if there is an income limit, it's probably gonna be something similar to what the CARES Act was, which was $75,000 per year for individuals and $150,000 per year for couples. If you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, or VA benefits, my guess is you're gonna be below that $40,000 limit no matter what. So I think you would be included in the second round of stimulus checks. For those of you that make more than $40,000 per year, I still think the income limit's going to be closer to what the CARES Act was, possibly the same as the CARES Act. So if you make $75,000 per year or less, my guess is if they pass the second stimulus check that you will get a second stimulus check. The other question about who's going to get it is dependents and those claimed on someone else's taxes. The HEROES Act that was passed back in May 
included $1,200 for those claimed as dependents as well as those that weren't claimed as dependents. The CARES Act, as we know, the first stimulus check, left out those that were claimed as dependents and those that were 17 years of age and up and claimed as dependents were completely left out of the first stimulus check. I think the House of Representatives is probably going to want to include those that were claimed as dependents. We'll see if the Senate gets on board with that one or not. I'm hopeful that that's the case and that those claimed as dependents will get the second stimulus check, but at this point it's still kind of up in the air and we'll hopefully know some more details next week when the Senate actually comes out with their package and plan. So my next question is, what are the chances that we get a second stimulus check? Is there a chance we won't get a second stimulus check? Well, at this point, both the House and the Senate have, have been on board with getting another stimulus check to individuals. It was really the Senate and Mitch McConnell that were kind of holding things up before and saying, yeah, let's wait and see. I, I'm not so sure we need a second stimulus check, but even Mitch McConnell said, you know, basically that there's going to be another stimulus check to individuals. President Trump has been on board for a few weeks now and is basically saying that he wants more stimulus than even what the Democrats in the House are asking for. So it does sound like the chances are very good that we are going to get a second stimulus check as part of the next stimulus proposal and next stimulus package. The question then becomes, what is the timeline for the next stimulus check? I think the very earliest we could start seeing the next stimulus check is about three weeks into August, and this is why. Congress is on recess right now until next Monday. They've said that they're going to start deliberating on the next stimulus package next week. If they work quickly, which yeah, maybe, maybe they can, but my guess is they probably can't. But if they do work quickly next week, and get something passed by next Friday, the 24th of July, then the House of Representatives, if they work quickly and can agree with what the Senate has proposed and everything else, and they can both agree on something, then they could pass something as soon as July 31st. Then President Trump would probably sign it soon thereafter. That puts us right at the 1st of August. Well, the CARES Act took about three weeks after the bill was passed to start sending out stimulus checks by direct deposit, and then later the paper checks came, and EIP debit cards as well. So we're looking at the very best case scenario is the third week in August at this point. So if they can pass something by the end of July, we're looking at about the third week of August before the next stimulus check can, can actually happen. That's the earliest timeline, and if they can't pass something by August 7th, which is three weeks from today, then they're actually going on recess again after August 7th. However, Nancy Pelosi just said a couple days ago that if there isn't another stimulus package passed by August 7th, that they're going to delay or cancel their recess until they can pass another stimulus package. My guess is that's going to be enough incentive that the House and the Senate will pass another stimulus package before that August 7th recess. And if they do wait and get something passed right by August 7th, then that would be about three weeks after that or right at the end of August, the first part of September, when we would start seeing the next stimulus check. This has been my stimulus update for Friday, July 17th. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and like this video so that YouTube will share it with others. Thank you once again for watching and I will talk to you again soon.